John chapter 8. We want to talk about our freedom, our liberty that we have in Christ this morning. And of course, we know that we're celebrating the 4th of July. And I don't know if you've ever done much study about the Revolutionary War. Uh, that actually the war began in April of 1975. And... Um, the people that lived in this nation, uh, they came to the place where they were just tired of the oppression, the tyranny of the King of England, the taxations and all the things they were involved in. And so they, and really it was just a very small handful that uh, took up arms against them. And of course then our forefathers got together and uh, wrote the, 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 the uh, Declaration of Independence and it, it actually was signed on, Jan, on uh, July the 2nd. Uh, it wasn't ratified to some time after that. And actually that dependence that, hey, we're free from your, your tyranny uh, wasn't given to the king of England until November of 1976. And actually the war for independence, it literally went on for almost nine years. Um, uh, there was at least close to uh, five, 6,000 American soldiers that lost their life during that time. But because of the prisoners they took and the sickness and the disease, about 24,000 people died for our liberty during that time. And of course, then you go down through America history, whether it become the uh, Civil War, over 500,000 people died to free the slaves. 500,000. And then if you take a look at all the deaths that happened in American history for, to maintain our freedom, it's, only, it's almost 1.5 million people who, who have died for our freedom. Now, their deaths, which are significant, is really cannot be compared to what Christ went through for us. Uh, our freedom in Christ. Our freedom as Americans is basically that we wanted to choose our destiny. We wanted to choose who we wanted to rule and reign over us or to be representatives of us, of the people, for the people, by the people. But our freedom in Christ is so much greater is so far beyond what we have as Americans. And the problem is a lot of people are not enjoying their freedom. Actually, I don't know if you know this, it was about 100 years later before they recognized July the 4th as the day of celebration for our freedom. Almost 100 years. It was back in, uh, eight, I think it was in, in 1870, finally they recognized July the 4th as a day that we could celebrate. You know, as Christians, we ought to be celebrating our freedom every day. Hallelujah. I said we ought to be celebrating our freedom. You know, and, and people, you know, as Americans, I know really there seems to be a real, and I'm not preaching on that, there just is a real uh, negative attitude about, about America right now. But them are people who have never been to other nations. Uh, we have our atrocities, absolutely. You've got corrupt people in political positions, absolutely. But you know what? I'm telling you what, I've been in nations around the world. How many have been to other nations? And, and, and those of you who've been to other nations, how many of you, would, of you would still choose America above the rest? Look at that. Why? Because, man, you don't know what a banana republic is. You don't know what lawlessness is. And I mean, it's, it's twisted out there in the other countries, even in Europe. But in America, we still have freedom of speech. We still can gather. In Canada, they've been arresting pastors for gathering. You probably know that. Because they want to gather. They want to get together. They want to worship Jesus, you know. And, and so we, we, we need to have a thankful heart. You, you know, that, that's, that's a heart filled with faith is a thankful heart. Uh, a grumbling, griping, fault-finding, nitpicking heart is full of unbelief. It's not full of faith. But I want to talk about our freedom in Christ to some extent. And, and you know what? There's freedom. And how do you apprehend that freedom? We'll look at that. And there's only one way to apprehend your freedom because Jesus has already overcame principalities and powers and made her show them openly triumphing over them in it. The devil is already defeated. Do you understand that? Our redemption has already been paid for. Our freedom is already ours. It's already, it's God's invisible declaration of independence. Our freedom, there's, and I want to look at two freedoms this morning. Our freedom from and our freedom to. Our freedom from, there's freedom from the works of the flesh. 
there's freedom from sin. Did you know that? The blood of Jesus was not shed for you could continue in your sin and be a slave because whom you serve, you are a servant to obey. Uh, Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose was the Son of God uh, come be, to, de, to, to destroy the works of the devil. Sin is a work of the devil. Amen. Listen, unbelief is a work of the devil. Now, we, li- we live in a very wicked world. We know this. We're surrounded with gross darkness. But Jesus said, Father, I don't pray that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them in the world. And why are we here? We're here to testify of Jesus Christ. We're here to reveal the freedom we have in Jesus. I said we have freedom in Jesus. But you got to take it by faith. And before I got born again, I was a slave to drugs. I was a slave to depression. I was a a, a slave to hate. I was a slave to all kinds of evils. But you know what? On that day when I gave my heart to Christ, he literally stepped in and he liberated me. It was my day of jubilee. Did you know that God set up every 50 years, Israelites were supposed to celebrate Jubilee. That means all of the slaves were required to be set free. And the way they got slaves among the country folk was because people got indebted and they, and, and they couldn't pay the debt. So in the old days, there was what we called debtor prison. How many have ever heard of debtor prison? They didn't, you couldn't go bankrupt. I mean, if you didn't pay your debts, you were sitting in jail. I mean, you were sent off to some kind of slave colony. And so the Israelites, but how many know that never happened? They never kept that feast day. They never kept that. You know why? Because Jesus is our jubilee. Jesus comes to set us free. Jesus comes to heal, deliver, uh, and and, and to break the the chains of bondage over our life. And we want to look at that this morning because whatever you're involved in right now, I want you to know Jesus wants to set you free. Now, uh, I want to do a couple things before I have Brother Sam come and I want him to testify a little bit. But I'm standing back there this morning and last night I heard the word of the Lord come to me. And and, and in my my spirit I perceive somebody is here and you've been having an upset stomach. Now, I know it could be more than one, but there's at least one person here this morning, you came with an upset stomach. If that's you, will you lift your hand? You're here this morning, you have an upset stomach, okay? Come up here. Now, here's freedom. God doesn't want her to have an upset stomach. You mean God really, really cares about that? Yes, he does. He cares about your upset stomach. He cares about the headache. He cares about the cancer. He cares about the arthritis. So, Father, we take our freedom this morning, and I come against that upset stomach, and I command it to go from you in Jesus' name. Now, be free. (laughs) Now, right now. Now, check. That pain is gone. Check your stomach. It's gone, ain't it? Is it gone? You Really? You're not lying to me. It's gone. It's gone. We'll give the Lord a hand clap. See, that's the freedom we're talking about. Now, somebody else came here this morning, and you've been running a slight fever. I want to pray with you. Who's been running the slight fever? Let me see your hand. And I know I have people come to me afterwards. Well, Pastor Mike, it comes. Uh, who, are you running a slight fever? Okay, who is that? Stephanie's running a slight fever. Okay, well, we'll just one of you ladies go back and lay your hands on Stephanie right now. Right there you are, Stephanie. Come here. You've been running a slight fever? It's got to go right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, I, did, I, I, I heard in my, in my inner man, it wasn't a r- radical fever, but it's just a, a slight irritating fever. And it's got to go. Do you believe it? Amen. Do you believe it? So, Lord, she's a captive to this fever. And, she, and the devil cannot hold her captive any longer. And we command the fever to go in Jesus' name and whatever is causing it to leave in Jesus' name. Now, in Jesus' name. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Amen. Now give the Lord a hand clap and a shout. See. It's our job to bring liberty. It's our job to bring freedom. It's our job to bring healing. Not, not just from fevers or stomach aches or cancer or arthritis, but also people who are under uh, terrible addictions. I told you some years ago, Sister Vicki, who uh, she she's still considers us her church. She doesn't come very often. She'll probably watch this video. But she came in here one morning, and I didn't even know it. Uh, she's a real tall brunette, probably been coming here for 20 years or something like that. She came in a full-fledged alcoholic, could not get free from it. She came up, laid hands on her, 
power of God hit her. I didn't know at the time she wasn't even born again. She wasn't even filled with the Holy Ghost, but she got it all that morning. And when she got up off the floor, she was completely free. That morning she had been drinking. When, uh, when That morning she was free from her alcohol and never went back to it again. Now, Brother Sam, you have a, 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 an amazing testimony. Come up here, Brother Sam, won't you? And I want him to share how Jesus gave him freedom. Now, uh, at another time, I'm going to actually video record Sam with the whole testimony. It's a long testimony, but he's just going to share what Jesus did to him. Now, you've been coming here for about a year, Sam? About a year, okay, man. here. Go ahead and tell the people. Tell, tell them what you had. Well, I had cancer in and both kidneys. Here, put it up. cancer and lymph node cancer. And it just start elevating from one bad thing to another. I uh, went to the VA hospital, and they diagnosed me with prostate cancer. They wanted to do cancer chemo. Cancer his whole body. They wanted to do chemo. And I'm a true believer that when God helps you, he leads you in the right direction. You know, it wasn't just that I'm just going to be healed from this cancer. God lead us in the right direction. And I was driving to Philadelphia. That's where my doctors were. And I seen this big billboard that said, prostate cancer, specialized in Jefferson Hospital. So I said, I'm going to leave this VA alone and get me a second opinion. So I went there. That's where God let me at. And they told me that the prostate was the least of my worries. I had cancer in both kidneys. And one needed to be taken out right away. And your lymph nodes too, right? Yes. It, yep. it went to a lymph node after lymph the node. surgery. So I had my... Uh, kidney done and six months later had my prostate removed and it went to a lymph node and the doctor told me said we can't do your other kidney right now we've got to treat you with medication so I was getting these big shots and they were like two thousand five hundred dollars well thank the Lord I had insurance but like you said in this country if you didn't have insurance this is the only country that would do that for you for free yeah so this is a good country we in yeah well anyway um, I start going to a church it's Bethel down in Littlestown, and I met Pastor Gary and the Pastor Ruddy, and they actually laid healing hands on me. And the pain in my mind was gone. What they did, uh, part of my healing was redoing my mind because I was worried so bad, and they would just tell me, let the Lord fix it for you. How many know we need freedom from fear? Well, Reach up and grab that, we yeah. should, that's torment. Well, I was really sick in the mind, not just in the body, but in my mind. And when Pastor Gary and Pastor Ruddy laid hands on me, I just started feeling at ease with myself and in my mind. And I started my faith in the Lord that would bring me through that. So moving on, I suffered with this cancer for over 20 years. Randy and Laura, they know they walked with me through that whole ordeal. 20 years. 20 years. So I had to I see my doctor like once every six months, every three months. And I used to see Pastor Denise down at Crossroads. That was another church I used to go to. And they would always lay healing hands on me. Yes. And that really worked because I start not only um, healing my mind, but healing my body. You know, I would go to the gym. I got a broken back, too. Well, two fractures broken in my back. back. But anyway, uh, healing hands, healing works, faith work. You got to have faith yeah. that the Lord's going to heal you. Yes. And I didn't. And then Randy says up to me one time, he says, Sam, you might have these things, but don't claim it. And that made a whole lot of sense. Don't claim it. Yes. And I walked through a lot of that because I have um, COPD, asthma, emphysema, the cancer, two fractures in my back. My bowel exploded. I had a colostomy bag on three years ago. I just had it took off not too long ago. They are witnesses. And not only that, I had a heart attack a year and a half ago. Yeah. The Lord just brought me through so many things, Pastor. That's just sickness. I've been through a whole lot more than that. You know, I can't get to that right now. But um, I went to see my doctor. I think now, about, you, you came here about a year ago, and you here. started coming here, and the people started laying hands on you here. It was you first, Pastor, Pastor Mike. And then, what's the brother's name behind, Rich? Ray. Well, anyway, you told me, you said, stand on and let somebody else pray for you. And it was a couple more brothers prayed for me. And then it was his turn to pray for me. He was like, Sam, I'm not going to pray for you. You're already healed. He's, and I looked at him, and I was like, wow, is that all I get? <laughs> well, I got, a lot, I got a lot more. Because when I see my cancer doctor that Monday, 
he, what he always told me when I come in this office, he go, Sam, have a seat. And I'd be like, oh man, here we go again. So then he, go, he goes, I don't need to see you anymore. He said, that spot is gone, you good. Give the Lord a hand clap. Yeah, you're good. So prayer works, but we got to have faith and we got to believe in that. We have to, if you don't believe, it ain't gonna work for you. Amen. And we just can't say, you know, uh, Lord, help me. Yeah. Well, he is gonna help you, but he's gonna lead, you gotta do footwork. Amen. You know, you gotta be led in the right direction. Amen. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Thank you, Sam. And I don't even know if I'm sick anymore. I know I gotta take aspirin and stuff like that, but <laughs> <laughs> I can lift weights. I can't walk or run. I can't walk fast. Well, it's coming. But, yeah. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Thank it's you, coming. God Thank bless you. you. Okay. Thank you. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. So he's cancer free. He went, but see, you understand, the thief comes to still kill and destroy. The devil came to make us slaves. To him, make us slaves to our feelings, our emotions, our circumstances, people's opinions. Uh, to, to things that aren't right. Jesus came to liberate us. So we got a situation here. It's going to get rather radical because Jesus is talking to his people in the Gospel of John chapter 8. Oh, you got something else. Okay. When, when I woke up one morning when my bowel exploded, um, I was rushed. I had, went to Hanover Hospital. I told my girlfriend, I said, I need to go right now. I had my pajamas on, didn't comb my hair, brush my teeth. I was so sick, so she drove me to the hospital, and I met this doctor. His name was Dr. Montgomery, and he asked me what was wrong. I told him, I said, I had a, a CAT scan, and I could still taste the stuff that, they, that I had to drink, the contrast. And he told me, go get another CAT scan. When I came back down, he said, I hate to tell you, you're not going to make it. And he prayed so hard, like I was one of his brothers or sisters or fathers. He prayed, he was laying hands on me and touched me all over the, the body. The doctor was. The doc, Dr. Wonderful. Montgomery. And he told my girlfriend, he said, you better call his family because he's not going to make it. I said, Doc, I'm right here. He said, I'm sorry. And he had two surgeries before me. And he did me first. And I died twice. The first time, he brought me back. The second time, he had to keep working. And when I woke up from the surgery, he said, Sam, you are a miracle. He said, you're not supposed to be here. And I'm so grateful that I had somebody to really pray for me. Because that did ease my mind going through that surgery. Amen. So God is good. I died on the table twice. Yeah. And Sam, here's a prophetic word. The Lord says, I kept you, son, because I have work for you to do. Your days are not over with. Your last days will be greater than your former and I seen you like out in a field with, a, with, with an old meal in your hand on the plow. And you're plowing the field and you're working for the king. I don't know how, what that entails, but I saw you out there in the field working for the king. Okay. <laughs> All right. Amen. Amen. You're working for. How many know in these last days all of us are going to. In the Navy, we used, we used to say all hands on deck. All hands on deck. That means every one of us, it's not just the guy in the pulpit or the people who are doing the Sunday school, whatever else. Every one of us, we've got to get busy because you know what? The souls are coming. The greatest, the greatest harvest the world has ever known. And that's why we're still here. The Lord, the harvest is patient until he receives the early and latter rain. And, and it probably ain't going to be what we think it's going to be. God's going to do a mighty work, a very quick work. So we're talking about freedom this morning for a little bit. So look here in the Gospel of John chapter 8, if you will, with me. The Gospel of John chapter 8. And Jesus has been speaking to uh, uh, his people. The, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In John chapter 8, verse 12. Then Jesus spake again unto them, saying, I am, and he's talking to those who have believed on him, I am the light of the world. Listen to this. He that followeth me shall not walk in what? Listen to this, shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Now this is freedom. What's freedom? Not walking in darkness. Not walking in fear. Not walking in anxiety. Not walking in sickness and disease. Not walking uh, under the oppression of the world, the flesh, and the devil. That's freedom. Jesus came to give you freedom. Now, the truth of the matter is God gave Canaan to Abraham and his descendants. 
But you know it was, uh, it was after the Israelites came out of Egypt and they came to the land of Canaan to the river Jordan. And, and God said, now listen, this land belongs to you, but you need to know there is an enemy in the land. And you're going to have to go in and you're going to have to defeat the enemy. The Canaanites, Hittites, Jebusites, and, and the Amalekites, and all the other rites. He said, you're, it's yours. I've given you the victory. Because if God be for you, who can be against you? But you're going to have to fight. Say, you're going to have to fight. See, I'm telling you right now, if Sam had not had that tenacity to fight and take a hold and say, no, devil, you're not going to kill me. I'm not leaving this earth. He would have died. Now, if he would have died loving God, he'd have been good to go. I'm not saying you can't leave this earth being sick and not make it. You're going to make it. OK, but that's not the issue. Why in the world let the devil take you out before God's done with you? I, I want to, you know what, I, I want to hang around and make him miserable as long as I can. I really do. I want to make him miserable. I, I want, I, I, you know, really, I, really, honestly, I believe every one of us can come to the place where when you get out of bed, the devil wets his pants and says, uh-oh, they're up again. Really, God wants you to be a threat to the devil. That's what Jesus came to do. And, and, and if you look at your natural circumstance, they, they, if you're considering your circumstance, you're not free yet. Because the Bible says the just shall live and the just shall walk by. Now, so you, you got to look at this. Faith is a completely different realm. That's why Jesus talked more about the subject of faith than any other subject. Because by faith, we apprehend his exceeding great and precious promises. By faith, we overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil. By faith, we get victory over every situation. I'm not saying that your flesh is going to agree with it. No, just tell your flesh to shut up and make it get in line with the word of God. But freedom, how did you get saved? By faith. I mean, you were transported. The Bible says the moment you were born again, you were transported from the power of darkness into the kingdom of his beloved son. As far as God's concerned, the moment you believed on Christ, all that Jesus did for you in his, in, in his earthly ministry, in his sufferings, in his crucifixion, in his death and his resurrection, was instantly deposited into your spiritual bank account. And you have to withdraw it. You have to take a hold of it. It's yours, but you got to take a hold of it. How do you do it? By faith. By faith, you take a hold of what God has for you. And by faith, we apprehend all that Jesus is and all. So he says, Jesus said, he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. It takes faith to follow Jesus. Now, don't tell me you're following Jesus and you're walking in darkness. The more, the, the more you follow Jesus, the closer you get to Jesus, the more of heaven you will experience. I'm going to say again, the closer you get to God, the more of heaven you will experience in your life. Now, listen, I'm not saying the devil won't attack you. I'm not saying the devil won't afflict you. I'm not saying the devil won't try to deceive you. I mean, that's what he, he's, he, he comes to do, to steal, kill, and destroy. But if you'll go by faith and say, you know what, devil, you're a liar. You're defeated. You're under my feet. Jesus overcame you. All authority and power was given to him. He told us that, and I believe what he said. See, your freedom can only be to the level of what you believe what Jesus said. Now, if I'm not believing, don't go into a, 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 you know, don't get angry, don't get upset, don't get bitter, don't suck your thumb, don't fill your diaper. Just say, okay, God, I, I really need to know. See, I know uh, that, that I have not yet apprehended all of my freedom. I, I mean, you know, Jesus came to make us free from what? Fear, worry, anxiety, the works of the flesh, sin, uh, disobedience, anything that's contrary to the will of God. Unfaithfulness, no commitment, no passion. Uh, he, he, came to, he, he came to set you free from praylessness. You, you don't pray. You, you know, you, you need to take your freedom. Yeah, you know, I, I thank God for, for the policemen. We know that all policemen are not godly men. A lot of them aren't, you know. And, and I'm sorry, there's been times when I had to deal with the authorities of even a local community. And, and they came over here and tried to uh, usurp authority. And I didn't do it in ignorance. I just, because I know my rights. How many of you know your rights? 
And, and so I, I used to have, a, and I, I, got, I got a little booklet. It's called uh, Know Your Constitutional Rights. I've used that book. We would go into the city of, uh, down in Maryland. We'd go to Ocean City, and we would go to Bethany Beach in Delaware, and we would go to uh, uh, Rehoboth Beach. And I went right into the township, uh, uh, the, the, into the courthouse, and I said, by the way, I'm bringing down teams of men on this date, and we're going to be passing out tracks, passing out tapes, and sharing Christ on the boardwalk. And every one of those people, chief of po- the chief of police in, in, in Rehoboth, and, and then I had the town manager uh, uh, up in Bethany, and they all got in my face and said, no, you're not, no, you're not. If, if you come down here on the boardwalk, we're going to arrest you. I start laughing. They said, what are you laughing about? I said, well, it's because I know my rights. They said, what? I didn't get ugly. And I handed them my little booklet. I said, listen, before you do that, you just need to understand that if you stop us from sharing the gospel, I said, we're not going to stop them from walking. We're not going to shove it in their face, but we're going to preach the gospel. It's our constitutional right. And I said, if you harass us or arrest us or anything, I said, we'll see you in court. They said, what? I told all of these managers with a smile on my face. I know they wanted to punch me. (laughs) I said, we're going to preach the gospel and you're not going to stop us. And if we go to court, I said, I'm going to sue you and you'll lose and you'll lose in court. So the day came and the one guy up in in, in Rehoboth, he actually, I, I turned around, walked away from him. He ran down the hallway and he was screaming at me, screaming at me. And I just kept on laughing. And so we came down with a van full of guys and we hit Ocean City and we hit Rehoboth and we hit Bethany. And sure enough, here comes the police. And I would tell him, I said, now, before you harass us, you better call up your headquarters. I said, before you guys get in trouble. They said, what? I said, you ready? And every time, they said, oh, okay, uh, uh, we'll leave you alone. And they left us alone. Well, I, I want you to give the Lord a hand clap for that because there's a spiritual principle involved in this. Because they could have intimidated me. I didn't have to be ugly. I didn't have to be mean. I, didn't have, I just knew my rights. Right, right. And I was willing to go to jail in order to preach the gospel. Amen. Are any of you willing to go to jail to preach the gospel? Hold on. Next week, we're going to have a chance. And so we're going to preach the gospel. Listen, you, if you know your rights, then you can stand against the devil. You can stand against the enemy. Jesus said, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will loose in heaven. You've got authority. But you got to put up your spiritual dukes. Go ahead, put them up. <laughs> come on, come on. Put up your spiritual dukes and say, you know what? I- I'm just going to do, it's not legalism. I'm just going to trust God. I'm going to believe God. I'm going to obey God. I'm going to walk in my freedom. I am free. I'm free. I'm free to cast out devils, lay hands on the sick. I'm free to speak to the mountain. That's the freedom I have in Jesus. So you, you can walk around and act like you're a slave, but you're not supposed to be a slave. There's freedom from fear. But we saw a lot of Christians taken captive by fear. Oh, did you hear, Pastor Mike? There's a new type of variant COVID. Well, have at it, but in Jesus' name, it ain't going to affect me. Well, what if it does attack you? I'm just coming against it. I'm just going to stand on the word. It might be a battle. It might be a fight. It could be that you'd even get close to dying. But you know what God did? Look what he did for Sam. The doctor said, sorry, Sam, you can't come out of this. Well, guess what? God brought him out. Say, God's bringing me out. Come on, let's not be slaves. Come on, we don't have, as Christians, we don't have to be slaves to anything the devil has to offer us. Anything, say anything. And so Jesus said, look what he said. I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. I say this. He that followeth me won't be a slave. Well, how do you follow Jesus? Do what Jesus did and say what Jesus said. Believe what Jesus believed. That's what following him is. If somebody says, well, he's a follower of mine, that means he does what I do. He says what I say. And, and he, he, actually, you've got to think like he thinks. You want to be free? Think like Jesus thinks. That's why I just my newest book called The Tale of Two Minds. It just came in back there. And it's talking about two different kinds of Christians. The spiritually minded and the carnally minded. Pastor Mike, have you ever been carnally minded? Does the sun rise and set every day? 
So what do you do when you find out you're carnally minded? Wherever you're carnally minded, you are a slave. Guess what I do? I attack that carnality with what? The truth. Say attack it with the truth. <laughs> are y'all here this morning? <laughs> you got to attack it with the truth. Well, let's jump down here to verse 31. Because what Jesus said, now this in all of chapter 8, and, and what he did as Jesus went on, did you know that everything Jesus said, he said it on purpose, and he even tells these guys, he said, you guys want to kill me because my word has no place in your heart. They said, Didn't we, did we not rightly say you have a devil who's trying to kill you? Well, by the end, you get to the end of chapter 8, and guess what? They're picking up stones to kill him. Because the flesh doesn't like, you know, darkness don't like light. Your flesh, your flesh doesn't like the truth. Your flesh, your flesh, your, the pride. See, you got to get free from pride. How many know that people need to be delivered from pride? And you can't cast it out. You got to cast it down. You got to mortify it. A lot of people are trying to cast devils out, Christ, devils out of Christians. They ain't got devils. They got unrenewed minds. They got carnal minds that have opened the door for the devil to come in. Because that's how the devil works. He, he works through a mind that is not renewed. He works through a mind that doesn't think like God, talk like God, act like God, live like God. And, and, and you got a guy whose mind has been renewed, fear will not come into him. Oh, they'll come knocking, but you just look out the window and you say, don't just open the door. Look out the window and go, oh, that's just the stinking devil. You, you, how many got no trespassing signs up? You, you ought to put up no trespassing signs. Say, devil, you ain't trespassing. The minute the devil sticks his, 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 his nose into my house at home ever since my kids were born, guess what we do? We rise up and we kick him out. Kick him out. Yes. Say, kick him out. Yes. The minute a symptom hits my body, I don't wait till it sets in. I rise up in Jesus' name and I take my freedom. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free and be not again entangled in the yoke of bondage. What bondage? Anything that's contrary to the word of God? Yes. You know, really, poverty is a work of the devil. I'm talking about poverty. You shouldn't let poverty be in your life. Now, I understand you got to be a good steward because if you're not good to steward, if, you, if your priorities aren't right, and there's a lot of people in America right now, they're deep, deeply in debt. You know why? Because their flesh got away from them. They decided they wanted to buy something they couldn't afford because the bank system, they know how to take advantage of you and give you 21% interest rates on those credit cards. And you can't catch up because your flesh had to have that. Tell somebody, slap your flesh. Amen. You know, it's amazing how many people have to go through bankruptcy. And I hate to say this. I did. I made some major mistakes. And you know what? But I, after I went through bankruptcy, and I was so ashamed of it, and the Lord said, okay, have you learned your lesson, son? I said, yes, Lord. He said, don't do it again. Don't, don't buy what you don't need. And don't, don't spend money on stuff that's just going to perish. Godliness with contentment is what? Great gain. <laughs> oh, that's good. Grab that, man. I'm grabbing it. Because my old carnal flesh, it wants this. It's got to have that. It's got to do this. It's got No, just shut up. I'm free. I'm free from my body telling me what to think, what to do, where to go, and when to do it. Did you know, how, how many of you ever experienced that kind of freedom? There is a freedom to where you're no longer a slave to your emotions. A slave to your feelings. Yeah. See, I, 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 my mindset is different. I, 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 it had to be God that developed this because I didn't have this before I got saved. I mean, I, I, I mean, but when I got born again, just this divine audacity rose up in me, a, a, a supernatural violence. And I just said, you know what? Jesus paid the ultimate price uh, for my healing. And, and I'm not letting, listen, I said, I'm not letting the devil rob me from my freedom to let sickness and disease uh, kill me. And I just began to rise up and I just said, in the name of Jesus, when sickness would attack my body. Did it always go away? Well, the Revolutionary War, it was nine years of fighting. But guess what? Aren't you glad they didn't quit? If they would have quit, 
I'm telling you, Great Britain would have really put the thumbs down on us. I mean, they would have really, see, if you quit fighting, then the enemy is really going to put you in bondage. He, he's going to put you in solitary confinements and chains. I mean, he ain't just going to let you run around with the rest of the prison population. He's going to really put the hurt on you. And so you, you and I, we got to decide in our heart by faith, I'm not letting the devil do this. I'm not letting him. You're not making me depressed. You're not making me backslide. You're not making me give in, into the world. You're not going to make, I'm not going to connive. I'm not going to manipulate. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to compromise. No, in Jesus' name, I'm not going to do that. And it's what we call faith. <laughs> you all seem so happy this morning. <laughs> Are you all happy this morning? We're talking freedom. Let freedom reign. Where? In me. Let freedom reign in me. So Jesus goes on in verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which, what? Believed on him. Listen to this. If you continue where? Oh, listen to this. That means abide, remain, stay. He's talking to people who believed on him. If you do what? If you abide in me, if you continue in me. If you consist, how many of you breathe on a regular basis? Can I see your hands? The rest of you are amazing. I breathe on a regular basis. How many of you have a heart that just beats consistently? Let me see your hand. Those of those will pray for you if you don't. For in other words, you breathe. how many of you eat on a consistent basis? <laughs> it's obvious, right? Okay, so you know there's got to be repetition, right? Repetition is good. How many know repetition is good? When you walk, your feet, that's just repetition. All of your life. I think I read somewhere the average person in America will walk like 30,000 miles through his whole life. Thousands of miles. And how did you do it? You put one foot in front of another. I'm telling you, that's how we grow spiritually. God who came in, it says, for where the Spirit is, the, the, where, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same, same image. How? From glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So you take one little spiritual step. And then another little spiritual step. How do you do that? Stay in the Bible. Stay in prayer. Stay in the Word. Go to church. Uh, uh, share Christ. Pray, sing songs, lift holy hands. You're doing the word like your body is moving. You're involved, okay? Little spiritual steps. And it says we go from what? Glory to glory. Uh, becoming more and more like Jesus. You don't become more uh, just like Jesus the moment you're born again. His spirit is within you. But you've got to take your footsteps and you've got to walk in the light. That's how we began this. He says, if you'll follow me, you'll walk in the light. So it's little spiritual footsteps, and we're being changed into Jesus. Now, if you stop walking with Christ, guess what? You're, 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 you're going to go back into bondage. you got to stay under the light of the glory of Jesus Christ from glory to glory. A little here and a little there, precept upon precept. You know, when my, my daughter began her journey back about nine years ago or something, when she began to meditate and memorize on scriptures, she'll tell you she didn't hardly know any scriptures. I tell you what, every week now, she said, Dad, I got to do at least two or at least three scriptures a week. At least. At least. Now, she's kept it up. And now I listen to her YouTube channel, and she knows scriptures that I never thought about memorizing. And I'm telling you, she's memorized thousands of scriptures and asked her if it's made a difference in her life. But guess what? It was just little baby steps. And to this day, every day, she says, this week I'm going to memorize three more scriptures. I'm going to memorize three more scriptures. And she'll make a song to them and she'll sing them, put them up on YouTube. And she's helping other people. It has drastically changed her life. I've watched her transformed. How? By the word of God. By the what? See, if you want to be free, the only place you're going to find freedom is in Jesus and the truth. How, how, how was I free to go with that team of men down there to Maryland and Delaware and preach the gospel? And I had town authorities tell me that I could not do it. You know what? I knew the truth. I put the truth. It's a little book back here. It's back here. I knew the truth and I had it in my hand. And I gave it to him and I said, now here's the truth about what my rights are as an American. 
And there's court cases in there where they try to stop people from preaching. And those counties and those towns lost. They lost the lawsuit. And they were sued vice versa. I said, so before you go threatening me, I said, you better just be ready for what's going to hit you when you do. <laughs> and they all backed off. That's how you treat the devil. You know, it just, no, devil, I know my rights. And by his stripes, I was healed. God meets all my needs. I don't have a spirit of fear. I, I've had the township come here at times and try to intimidate me, and I've laughed at them. Not because I meant to, because maybe I'm a little bit of a smart aleck. I just laugh at them, and they get so frustrated. I said, hold on, hold on. I said, I, I know what the laws are. I said, I know the, the ordinances here. Because they came here one time because they brought in what we call zoning. And we built this church way before. And, and two of the guys stopped by. And, they, and they, they, because they don't understand us. Because we're not a traditional church. We're not Lutheran, Presbyterian, Catholic, you know, Baptist. I mean, we are Pentecostals. Hello, we speak in strange languages. We got people falling on the ground, flopping at times. I mean, we got some, you know, we had a move of God back in 97, and we had people drunk in the Holy Ghost, laying in the snow banks. We had, remember those days, Tiny, and we, we, we had to assign speaker people to take them home. They were drunk in the spirit. So they think we're just way out there, you know. And, and so they come along, and they said, uh, by the way, Reverend, this is zone commercial now, and you cannot add any addition on to this building. I started laughing at them. They said, what are you laughing for? I said, well, first of all, there's two laws. I said, I, 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 I'm not very proud. I'm not a, a Clinton man, but Clinton actually sound the Freedom of Religion Act. And I said, there's a Freedom of Religion Act, and you cannot zone churches out anywhere. They said, what? I said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I said, I'll run the copy off for you. And I said, I'll hand deliver it to your office. I said, not only that, but there's what we call the, the, the law. Uh, what is it called when you've already built previously? Grandfather. Grandfather clause. I said, I know how right. I said, I could add to this building as much as I want. I said, there's the grandfather clause. Well, they never came back and bothered me about that again. But did they know better, Pastor Mike? Oh, I believe they knew better. They didn't know about the Freedom of, of, of Religion Act, but they knew about the Grandfather Clause. What were they trying to do? The devil was trying to shut us up and, 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 and stop us from growing. Because I think he knows we're about ready to hit a spurt. <laughs> Woo! Glory! A tsunami of the Holy Ghost is about to come. And he can't stop us. So you got to know your spiritual rights. See, we're going to deal with natural man, but how many know you got to deal with the devil? And a lot of times people are saying, God, please do something. And God said, you don't understand. I already gave you the authority. I already gave you the power. I already gave you dominion. I already gave, it's yours. He said, you speak to the mountain. You command the mountain to be cast into the sea. Don't doubt it in your heart. Believe it. Say it. Say, say it. Amen. And so Jesus said, if you continue my word, then you are my disciples indeed. Listen to this. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Free from what? The lies of the devil. Lies uh, that they make you feel like a yo-yo, up and down, up and down, up and down. Happy, discouraged. You know, uh, joyful, sad. Uh, 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 loving and hating, you know, uh, just you, the truth will make you free. You know, it says uh, there uh, for the law, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. It's made me free from the law of sin and death. I, I, I've got so many scriptures and I won't get into them because there's so many script. Look there in John chapter eight, verse 36. Listen, if the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Now, let me just ask, because mentally we can acknowledge this, but we got to get this in our heart. How many believe what Jesus did on the cross was more than enough to set you free from every work of the devil and the flesh? How many believe that? Okay, then how come we're not walking in it? Because he says you got to what? Continue in the truth. You got to get this truth in your heart. 
See, what is faith? Faith is simply when the word of God becomes more real to you than the problem you're being confronted with. That's what faith is. Now, stop and think about this. I mean, this wild, wild story that uh, 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 God became a man. And that man walked amongst us and lived amongst us. And, 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 and for three and a half years, he preached and healed the sick and, and raised the dead and cleansed the lepers and opened the eyes of the blind and not stopped the ears of the deaf. Uh, and, and, and everybody was healed. And, and then he, he took the sins uh, uh, of his people upon himself and he went to the cross and he, he was made a curse that we might be blessed. And he hung on the tree and as he was about ready to die he gave up the spirit the ghost and and he and he said it is finished it is finished what's finished the devil's finished he knows what what what's going to happen in these last days listen to people it's going to get much much worse because the devil's filled with great rage and he knows it's amazing because when Jesus went to cast the devils out of the Gadareans, they said, have you come to judge us before our time? They knew there was a timetable. Now, that's 2,000 years ago. The devil's time is running out. Only a little bit of sand left in the hourglass. I'm telling you, the devil, he's already been defeated. He's already under our feet. It says that. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us? Word, according to the power that worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above. Say, far above. Now, in my day and age, we'd say far out, man, far out. No, far above all principalities and powers, uh, all of the demonic powers of the world. And has put all things under his feet and, and gave himself to be the head over the body, the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Listen, if you're a part of the body of Christ, if you're, if you're in the smallest part of the body, if you're the little toe, the devil is still under you. See, he says, behold, I give unto you power to tread upon snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means come to harm you. Can you grab that truth? If I didn't have that in my heart, I would have been dead a long time ago. Get the truth in your heart. Stop seeing yourself as a victim. Stop seeing you as a victim. You know, that's the one thing about, uh, I, I, I marry a woman, I, I married a woman who knows her rights in Christ. And, and, and I was born again, but parts of my mind were not renewed. And so I, I would treat her in a way of trying to intimidate her. Listen, I'm telling you, all of those years, because that's how my dad ruled my house. He intimidated my mom and intimidated all of us. I married a woman who I could not intimidate. It infuriated me. Now, I never physically hit her, but I know if I would have, she would have hit me back. <laughs> I know she would have, you know. But, you know, her, her, one of her, her stepdads, her dad died when she was a little girl. Her, one of her stepdads was abusing her mother. Her mother grabbed the 12-gauge shotgun and started chasing him down the road. <laughs> no? Oh, he chased her with a shotgun. <laughs> Well, she should have chased him with a shotgun. I got the story backwards. I mean, don't, don't let the devil chase you down the road with a 12-gauge shotgun. <laughs> Turn around and get in his face. So, anyways, I couldn't intimidate her. Listen, don't let the devil intimidate you. Don't let fear control you. God hasn't given you a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. God isn't giving you a spirit of fear. Don't, don't walk in the light. Walk in the truth. If you continue in my word, then you will know the truth. And the truth will what? It'll make you free. See, there are such levels of freedom. What's up, baby? She what? Oh, okay. That was a good thing to do, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but but <laughs> she got back. But there's freedom in Jesus. We're celebrating the 4th of July. We're celebrating our independence from a nation that was tyrannical. 
okay, taxing and all the other mess. But I tell you what, our freedom in Christ is a billion times more. We got eternity. Now, now if you don't like me now, hold on, you'll like me in heaven. Because in heaven, we're all going to be perfect. In heaven, it says when we see him, we'll be just like him. But you know what? I can see him now. I don't have to wait to heaven to experience more freedom. There's freedom in Jesus. And, there's, and if there's freedom, there's joy. And there's peace. And there's love. And there's righteousness. This is all found in Jesus. And I'm not preaching something that I don't live in. I strive to live in. Do you ever let the devil mess you up, Pastor Mike? I have. But when I find out that he messed me up by the word, I take authority over him. I stand up against him. It's time we stand up against the devil. It's time that we shoot off our 4th of Julys and celebrate our, our fireworks. Amen. It's, it's time for us to take our rightful position as the body of Christ. I think right now the body of Christ only sees itself as a victim. Oh, we're so victimized. We're so traumatized. We're, we're, our rights are being taken away. Oh, we can't do this no more. We can't do that. Well, listen, people who live in fear will talk that way. But I'm free. Listen, I, we did not close. We were doing nine meetings when this whole COVID thing came out. How, ask me how many meetings we shut down because of COVID zero and it wasn't because i have amendment i have constitutional rights even though i do it's because i have a biblical right to gather that's all there is to it i mean i I was ready i said lord if you want me to go to jail they're going to regret it because when i get in there i'm going to preach jesus from morning to night and if they put me in uh, 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 solidary confinement i'm just going to be quoting and speaking and praying the word and I'll, I'll, i'll i'll have a chance to get close to you and so we didn't shut it down why because i didn't make anybody wear a mask amen I think some people should wear a mask because, you know, their breath smells so bad. But I never wore a mask. I never wore a mask. And it wasn't whether, do masks work or not? And of course, we already know what the answer is. But it was all a source of the devil. I'm going to say it's the devil trying to control people and manipulate people. I had people call me up and say, oh, Pastor Mike, I, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to come back to church. I said, well, stay home then. You want, to, you want to stay home? Yeah, but they're up in years. Listen, I don't care how old I get. I'm not going to accept the spirit of fear. Amen. I'm not going to do it. If the Lord tarries, they say, well, the elderly are really susceptible to it. Okay, that's their choice. But I don't care if the Lord keeps me to I'm not. I tell you, if Mama Jenkins was alive and she was 102 when she went home to be the Lord. And if she would have been through that time of the COVID, 102, she would not. I know her. She was a brave, godly uh, woman. And she, she would have got in the devil's face and said, you're not stopping me, devil, from preaching. You're not stopping me from walking with God. People say, why? We can't afford to go to church. We don't have enough gas money. Really? Don't you know that God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory? How how many ever drove your car when there was no gas in it? Now get your hands up there. Look at how many. Look at this. God, you mean your car kept running with no gas in it? I bet there's a dozen people. Then that does away with your excuse. Well, I can't go afford to pay for gas to go to church. Who told you that? Did God tell you that? I'm going to keep preaching until you respond. How's that? (laughs) Come on, get loud, get loud. You're free. Hey, we're free to shout. We're free to shout. We're free to clap. We're free to dance. This coming week, we'll be free to pass out tracts and preach Jesus wherever we go. Yeah, we'll close here, but I, uh, I was working for uh, Byers, and this was in Mount Union, Pennsylvania, back in 1979, and it's owned by a Jewish man, and they make Easter grass. And I, I'd work, I'd work, you know, I, I, when I preached, it was on my time off, but I, when I was around these guys, and they'd get the swearing, they'd use the name of Jesus, I'd start shouting the name of Jesus. I mean, they'd use God's name in vain, and I'd use it in praise. So I got called into the carpet, and they said to me, hey, you can't be doing that stuff here. I said, I'll tell you what, when they stop using the name of Jesus as a cuss word, then I'll stop shouting his name as a praise word. And you know what? They left me alone from that day forward. 
Yeah, but you might have got fired. I told people, I said, hey, if you want to fire me, you go ahead and fire me. You know, you got to put your foot down. Here's a true story. My wife and I, we were newlyweds. Just got married, went to Rama, and we got hired at a McDonald's. And I told the manager, I said, now listen, I said, we only got one vehicle. We go to school in the morning, and then we're off in the afternoon. And I said, here's the deal. And I told the manager, I said, my wife and I, we work together as partners. I said, the day you call up and just say that you want me or my wife, period, I said, we're done working for you. Now, I needed $500 just to pay the, the, the college bill and, and some of the other bills. And, you know, McDonald's wasn't paying that much, but I just said, I'll believe God for the rest. And so we're working for him, right? As a matter of fact, one day I come in, and the, the guy who usually does the, the works, it was lunchtime, and the guy who works on the grill, he's gone. And, and, and they said to me, they said, Mike, you're going to you're gonna have to do all the, all the cooking today. I said, okay. They, have you ever done it before? I said, no. Just show me real quick what to do. They looked at me like, oh, we're in trouble. So I'm back there, and I actually pray a simple prayer. I said, now, Lord, you said I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am not exaggerating. Next thing, though, I had a divine download on how to cook. I mean, supernaturally, I began to do the hamburgers, I did the fish, I did the french fries, and I am running like I've been doing this thing in clockwork. The manager stands there, and he's watching me. I mean, his eyes are that big. And so after the rush time got done, he came, he, he, he came to me, he said, Mike, he said, I've never seen like nothing like that in my whole life. He said, man, he said, you are just, he said, you're like a one-man army back there. He said, how long you been doing this? I said, I've never done it. He said, what? I said, let me tell you why I could do it. And I preached Jesus Christ to him. So one day he calls, he calls up and said, oh, by the way, uh, we don't want you today. We just want your wife. I said, well, have a wonderful life. He said, what? I said, I told you. I said, you agreed. See, when you get hired by somebody and they tell you, yeah, you can have your Sundays off. And all of a sudden they change it. And now you're a slave. Now they got you. Yep, that's what happens to people. Yep, you, you laid the law down before you ever got hired. And now they're going to push you. How I many you know the devil's going to push you to see how far he can take you? And so I said, goodbye. And I hung up the phone. I never talked to him again. They finally sent us our checks. And I said, Lord, I said, now I thank you for a job. Next thing you know, I got contacted. They needed a new janitor in a broken era school district. So now I'm as a janitor and I'm working, my, I'm, I'm working my tail off for Jesus. So all the guys are in there. They, they have like a coffee room and, and they'd spend probably half of the night in a coffee room just gossiping. Well, the one guy was extremely immoral. Uh, he, he had a, he was a pervert is what he was. And I didn't like to be in there anyways and listen to all the filth. So I'd be working and working this one on for about three months, four months. And, 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 and uh, uh, finally in the springtime, I'm out there and I'm way ahead of schedule. And the guy comes in storming into my, my, my uh, classroom where I'm buffing the floor and I'm waxing and I'm praying. And say, I like to get alone praying tongues and I'd be singing to the Lord as I'm going through that. And then as I went into, you wouldn't believe it, the filthiest place I had to clean was the girls' restroom. They wrote the filthiest stuff you could imagine on their walls. And I'd have to scrub them all down and get rid of all the filth. So he comes into the classroom and he starts yelling and screaming at me. Ha, ha, wha, how, you know, he's upset because I'm way ahead of schedule. I'm making these guys look bad. And I'm, and, and, and I'm not intimidated. He's probably about 300 and some pounds, probably about over six feet tall. I'm just a little guy. And I'm looking at him and the Lord said to me, he said, you're done. I said, what? Now remember, I need money. You're done. And I looked at the guy and I said, okay. I said, I'm done. He said, what? I said, goodbye. I let go of the buffer and I went and, went and he, he yelled at me, chasing me down the hallway in that public school. You can't leave. You can't leave. I said, too late. Have a wonderful life. Goodbye. So I quit, went home, went to Bible school. And I said to the Lord, listen, I prayed. How I many you know it takes faith? I prayed a simple prayer. I'm only a 22-year-old kid probably 23 by now, and I said, Lord, I said, um, I need another job. And uh, I said, you know what, Lord, I want to work for Rama. Now, I didn't tell anybody. I said, Lord, I want to work for Rama. I want to work for Brother Hagen. And I said, now, Lord, I thank you for it. Say, thank you, Lord. <laughs> That's all I prayed. I didn't go on and I, oh, God, I need a job. Oh, I see, I'm free. 
I can ask my daddy for what I know in my heart is right. How many know God can lead your prayers? So I said, Lord, I need a job. So over the intercom, my wife would tell you, that very day I prayed that prayer in the morning, they said, we are hiring for ground crews at Rama. If you're interested in having a job, now I never work ground crews. We come and, and fill out an application. I go in, I fill out an application, never did ground crews. I did lots of other work. You know, I was a fisherman. Uh, I changed tires at a restaurant. I worked at a strawberry plantation. I baled hay. I delivered all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, worked at an Easter grass plant. And Next thing I know, that afternoon they called me up and said, hey, uh, is this Mike Yeager? Yeah, he said, you're hired. I ended up working with Brother Hagen's older brother, Dub. That was a wild experience. And I ended up at Brother Hagen's house. You know why? Because I'm free to serve God. Amen. I'm not going to be intimidated. We'll give the Lord a hand clap and a shout. 